it's Katrina. Pack hunters. One of the most infamous types of dinosaur in history just got a lot more interesting. The legendary Tyrannosaur wasn't only a voracious killer of other dinosaurs, but apparently a pack animal. The new discovery of an ancient Tyrannosaur mass grave has revealed that these prehistoric predators likely hunted in packs. It wasn't just one gigantic Tyrannosaur that would have tracked down its victim, but four or five of them together, working like modern wolves. The discovery came in the form of a group of Teratophonius fossils. The name translates roughly to monstrous murderer. And although these ancient dinosaurs aren't as popular as their relatives the Tyrannosaurus rex, they were still Tyrannosaurs. And judging by how many of them were discovered fossilized in sediment from 76 million years ago in the desert of Utah, they liked to hang out in a gang. They were essentially giant lizards with teeth like steak knives that hunted in packs. Paleontologist Alan Titus says the Teratophonius got together to form mobs, with each member having a specialized role in the group. But keep in mind, the only evidence we have of this comes from a single pile of bones. First, a single ankle bone was found in the rock formation in Utah, then a whole pile of bones. Either a whole group of these monsters died coincidentally in the exact same place, or a cataclysmic event killed them all at the same time, while they were roaming in a murderous clique looking for fresh meat. The Armless Dinosaur A new dinosaur was discovered in Argentina with some very unusual characteristics. Actually, it had one characteristic specifically that is highly unusual. This dinosaur ran around with pretty much no arms. We're all familiar with the T-Rex and its stubby little arms, but the newly named Gemisia ochai has even smaller arms. Researchers believe it's the closest known relative to armless dinosaurs that dominated the southern hemisphere 70 million years ago. A single, only partially complete skull was found in Argentina, dating back to the late Cretaceous period. It was a species of abelisaurid, and it was dramatically different from others of its kind in Africa and India. The abelisaurid, despite the fact it had tiny nubs for arms, was so ferocious that it could take down dinosaurs much larger than itself, like the titanosaur. What's really weird is that their arms were essentially useless. Researchers are still trying to figure out why the creature even had the tiny arms at all. And to make this dinosaur even more bizarre, it had a very small brain. I'm not saying that to be rude, but it really did. Researchers say it had a remarkably small brain case, about 70% smaller than its relatives. It had a minuscule brain, arms that didn't work, and a jaw so powerful it could kill things nearly twice its size. The Dinosaur with Whale Blubber The Ichthyosaur is an ancient prehistoric monster that lived 150 million years ago. It looked an awful lot like a dolphin, yet it was deadlier than a shark and a crocodile combined. This marine reptile swam through the ocean and hunted anything that got near it. These monsters could grow to be the size of vehicles, and they had jaws filled with teeth specifically designed for ripping flesh apart. But here's something scientists just learned. The ichthyosaur also had a layer of blubber. There are plenty of modern animals with blubber, like seals and whales. It's a thick layer of fat under the skin to keep them insulated. But for the first time in history, Scientists from the Natural History Museum in Oslo have confirmed prehistoric reptiles also had blubber. The discovery came when studying the remains of an ichthyosaur skeleton. The skeleton was shockingly well-preserved and one of the only complete bone sets ever found of this type of animal. Researchers think it died and then floated down to the sea floor, where it came to rest on its back and was slowly covered over by sediment. The reason its skeleton was so perfectly preserved was because of its blubber, which covered all of its body except for its fins and flippers. This raises the question of just how many other prehistoric marine mammals may have had blubber. So far, this is the only one we know about. It was basically a prehistoric killer whale with the appetite of a shark and the insulation of a walrus. The Super Long-Necked Dinosaur if you've ever laid in bed at night and wondered to yourself where dragons came from, or why every ancient culture in the world invented some form of dragon, you're in luck. As it turns out, 
The myth of the mighty dragon was most likely inspired by the accidental discovery of long-necked dinosaur bones. The outrageous suggestion has been put forth by a team of paleontologists with the University of Alberta in Canada. They recently identified a new species of sauropod with a neck over 22 feet long, making up half the length of its entire body. Its fossil was found in China back in 2006 during construction work and amazingly still had its neck attached. The beast was named Xijiang Long, which in English means Dragon of Xijiang. PhD student Tetsuto Miyashita says that because China is home to the original myth of dragons, and because so many long-necked dinosaurs have been dug up in the country, it only makes sense to put two and two together. It's highly likely that everyone's favorite dragon on Game of Thrones was originally inspired by prehistoric people in China. They came across the fossils of long-necked dinosaurs and then didn't know what to think of them. If they found the bones, there must be a real animal lurking around. Then, over the centuries, the rumor spread. Cultures came up with their own versions of dragons, and the myth persists today. The Penguin Dino Paleontologists have discovered a dinosaur unlike anything you've ever heard of. Fossils have revealed a bizarre combination of features that made up this semi-aquatic monster, a totally new species of prehistoric predator. It had flippers, killer claws shaped like sickles, and the long, skinny neck of a swan. It's a relative of the Velociraptor, but it lived and hunted primarily in the ocean. It also has an extremely long and hard to pronounce name, Halzacaraptor esculiae. But perhaps the most interesting part of the dinosaur is that it maneuvered in the water like a penguin. That's right, you probably had no idea there were other types of raptors that lived in the water and looked more like penguins than the reptilian beasts from Jurassic Park. This discovery is actually the first evidence that predatory raptors abandoned dry land and started looking for food in the water. The bizarre combination of traits was so unusual that when it was first discovered, professional paleontologists thought it was a hoax. It took years for scientists to actually analyze the fossil, and only recently could they announce their discovery as legitimate. Dennis Voiten from the European Synchrotron says the penguin dinosaur was presumably amphibious, yet still capable of walking on land. It had flat bones and used its limbs to fly underwater just like modern penguins. It also had an unusual nerve infrastructure in its snout, similar to what crocodiles have that allows them to detect prey while swimming. Dinosaurs wagged their tails. Researchers at the Royal Veterinary College in London have discovered that much like the way humans swing their arms when they walk, dinosaurs wag their tails side to side as they walked. Using computer simulations to look at how bipedal dinosaurs moved around, researchers discovered that as dinosaurs ran, their tails likely wagged so that they could keep their balance. And in case you didn't know, it's actually the same reason people move their arms when they walk. The swinging of our limbs helps to counterbalance our movement and control our momentum. It's the same reason things that spin continue to spin until something stops them. If we ran around without moving our arms, we'd probably fall over. Unfortunately, the scientists found no evidence that dinosaurs wagged their tails when they were happy like dogs do, but it's still pretty fascinating. Dino communication. One of the biggest questions that keeps scientists up at night is this. How did dinosaurs communicate? Every animal in the world has some way of communicating, and so dinosaurs must have as well. They definitely didn't talk to one another, they had no language, but they did have ways of communicating information. The truth is that dinosaurs were individual beings just like how every dog is an individual animal with its own life, its own motives, and its own personality. One way scientists say dinosaurs communicated is through visual display. Seropsids, meaning reptiles and birds, were likely vision-oriented. They could see color and shape better than other animals, and so they communicated using body language. As for dinosaurs, they were also pretty visually intuitive. Prey species of dinosaurs often had eyes on the sides of their heads so that they could see everything around them. Whereas species of predators like tyrannosaurs had giant eyes on their faces looking directly forward, able to capture the slightest movement. What you might not know is that the Tyrannosaurus had giant optic lobes that gave them vision comparable to modern eagles. Dinosaurs were bright, many of them were covered in feathers, and researchers believe they primarily communicated in the same way colorful birds do today. 
However, there is evidence that some dinosaurs engaged in auditory communication. In other words, they made noises at each other. But this is shifty science, as paleontologists have a difficult time reconstructing the organs responsible for producing sound, such as the larynx. What researchers do know is that if dinosaurs could create sound, it was without doubt unlike anything we can imagine. The truth is that they were almost certainly incapable of making similar noises as mammals. That means that unlike in the movies, dinosaurs wouldn't have been able to roar. They instead would have made low frequency noises like hoots and booms while their mouths were closed. The Conquest of the Frogs The extinction of the dinosaurs had a lot of consequences for the planet. One of the weirder things that happened when the dinosaurs all died was that the planet was taken over briefly by an army of frogs. Yes, slimy amphibians ruled the globe in the vacuum left behind by the extinction of the dinosaurs. A new study has found that frogs exploded in number and diversified into thousands of different subspecies in the first few million years after the asteroid hit the Earth. We already know that frogs have been around for over 200 million years. But this new study, undertaken by researcher David Blackburn and his team at the Florida Museum of Natural History, found that they didn't really take off until the dinosaurs were gone. It was their extinction that resulted in the huge majority of frogs still living on our planet today. To reach this conclusion, the researchers analyzed 95 genes from over 150 different frog species. They then combined that data with another 145 species, creating a massive evolutionary tree of all frog families. They found that pretty much all frogs came from three major families that all branched out at the same time, right at the end of the age of dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Within just a few million years, frogs were some of the most abundant animals in the world, spread out to all corners of the globe. Early Primates and Their Dinosaur Friends Scientists recently identified the earliest primate ever after discovering the tiny teeth of a creature no bigger than a rat. The discovery has revealed something quite shocking. As it turns out, our most ancient ancestors were minuscule primates the size of rodents that lived with dinosaurs. The primates are called plesiadapiforms, and they were found in Montana. The primates represent the very beginnings of what would eventually become human life. They appeared about 66 million years ago, roughly 100,000 years after the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. However, Researchers say the primates had an even older ancestor that lived alongside dinosaurs. What that means is that technically, the very creatures we evolved from over millions of years were around at the same time as dinos, strolling across the planet together. Of course, early primates and dinosaurs probably weren't actually friends. Truth be told, early primates were likely victims of dinosaurs, probably eaten by tiny raptors. The true shock is that the ancestors of all modern primates, including humans, managed to survive the great extinction event and diversify when every last dinosaur was wiped out. Humans have technically already survived the greatest extinction event in planetary history, and so chances are that even if another one comes along, human life will find a way to survive. Dinosaurs were already doomed. What most people don't realize is that the dinosaurs were already doomed to extinction long before an asteroid wiped them out. The asteroid definitely quickened the deadline, no pun intended, but scientists say dinosaurs were already in a steep decline. To prove that theory, researchers took a look at three families of carnivores, the Tyrannosauridae, the Dromaeosauridae, and the Troodontidae. These families survived until the end of the Cretaceous and were some of the most diversified in the 40 years before the asteroid. Researchers compiled all the information they could about the dinosaur families to figure out what was happening to them 66 million years ago. Their conclusion was shocking. They found that they were in a massive decline starting 10 million years before the asteroid strike. What this means is that the dinosaurs were already going extinct worldwide, with dinosaur groups like Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops already under the threat of extinction. The main theory right now has to do with climate change. We know the Earth was undergoing a period of cooling, with the mean global temperature dropping about 8 degrees Celsius, or 46 degrees Fahrenheit. And because dinosaurs needed a warm climate for their metabolism to work properly, they slowly started dying. Even without the asteroid, they would have gone extinct because of climate change. 
And here's another couple of facts to back up the theory. Reptiles who didn't depend on a warm climate, along with mammals and birds who also didn't require extremely hot temperatures to stay alive, survived past the extinction event. Most have survived even until modern times in one form or another. In simple terms, the dinosaurs didn't die because of an asteroid. They went extinct because they couldn't handle the cold. The Draco Rex The Draco Rex is a relatively new type of dinosaur, new to science but extremely old to the world. What makes it so fascinating is that it looks an awful lot like a dragon from a fairy tale. It has a long tail, two powerful legs, a bony head covered in spikes, and a pointy jaw that looks like it's capable of spitting fire. But in fact, the Draco Rex is not a dragon at all. It belongs to a group of dinosaurs called Pachycephalosaurs, which translates roughly to bone-headed dinosaurs. And even though this creature looks like a savage predator, something that would stalk the prehistoric world feasting on anything smaller than it, that's not the case. It was actually a plant eater. It lived throughout Asia and North America during the late Cretaceous, from between roughly 95 to 66 million years ago. The Draco Rex is a fairly new specimen, the newest member of the Pachycephalosaurus family. Paleontologist Robert Bakker called it a remarkable milestone in the world of paleontology. He says the discovery of the Draco Rex proves that even when the dinosaurs were ending, right at the very end before the asteroid struck, they were still evolving. This particular breed of beasts combined primitive features with more evolved ones, such as unique knobs and spikes on its head for defense. Black and Red Moon Plants NASA's Artemis program is the newest attempt to return American astronauts to the moon. This is a very real program that NASA is currently undertaking to establish a permanent colony on the lunar surface. It will be a base at first, then hopefully grow into something more sustainable. One of the key aspects of creating a stable population on the moon is the ability to grow life in lunar soil. In other words, NASA needs to figure out how to turn moon dust into usable soil for crops. And believe it or not, they are making some shocking progress. A new study was carried out by a team of horticulturalists from the University of Florida. They managed to get small soil samples which were brought back from the six Apollo moon landing missions. They got approximately 12 grams of soil to complete their experiment. And what they discovered is that plants can indeed be grown in lunar soil, but they just don't look quite right. The researchers grew these same plants in small thimbles, which are normally used for growing cell cultures. Each thimble had a grab of soil, amounting to about a teaspoon. They used pure moon dirt and had a control of volcanic ash, which is the closest thing on Earth to lunar soil. Plants actually grew in the moon dirt and in the volcanic ash, but what the researchers discovered was that the plants that sprouted in the moon soil were smaller and had black and red discoloration. Scientifically, what this means is that the plants grew poorly. In the grand scheme of things, plants might be able to grow on the moon, but they're going to be sick looking with red and black coloring instead of green. Lost World in a Sinkhole Cave explorers in the south of China have come across something shocking and unbelievable. In 2022, when pretty much every last corner of the world has been explored, they found an entirely lost kingdom of nature hiding deep underground. These explorers uncovered a never-before-seen sinkhole, an enormous pit in the ground going over 630 feet deep. It's basically a huge natural well, only one that's bursting with fantastic forms of life. There were new species of animals, new kinds of plants, and who knows what kind of ancient fossils hidden in the bedrock. It is made up of three caves and measures 5 million cubic meters, the equivalent of 2,000 Olympic swimming pools. Right now, we don't know if there are any new things inside of the sinkhole, but there definitely could be. There is a lush forest at the bottom, with mysterious plants that grow to be taller than some people, and trees over 130 feet high, growing from soil on the bottom. It literally felt to the explorers as if they were descending into some subterranean mirror world filled with dinosaurs and extinct beasts. At least, that's what they said. Because the discovery was just made, we don't have all the scientific information. We know it's in the Guangxi Shuang Autonomous Region, according to the Chinese government. This is an area famous for its dense forests, huge limestone formations, and serpentine cave systems. 
Chances are, if this sinkhole went undiscovered until just recently, there could be even more mysterious underground ecosystems that haven't been found, ones with new and exciting animals that have never been documented. Tracks at White Sands Footprints from the Ice Age were found in White Sands National Park in New Mexico. Footprints of giant ground sloths, several packs of dire wolves, ancient camels, and footprints from mammoths that stood 13 feet tall. But it's not the ancient beasts that have gotten scientists excited about the discovery. Alongside the tracks of these extinct creatures, researchers found human footprints as well. These footprints tell a fascinating story. By doing forensic analysis of the prints, researchers were able to discover one person who had made a journey and then came back the same day. They also found the footprints of a person who came through the area in a hurry, carrying a child with them. These prints crisscrossed with those of an enormous ground sloth, which the experts were able to determine had stopped, stood on its massive hind legs, and sniffed the air, probably smelling the scent of humans who had recently gone by. Humans first arrived in North America about 13,000 years ago, but more and more evidence like these footprints is pushing that date even further back to thousands of years earlier. The WOW Signal A new development has been made over 40 years after the infamous WOW Signal was recorded. For a quick refresher, this signal was captured on the night of August 15, 1977. It was captured by the SETI program, which stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. On that night, a one-of-a-kind signal from deep in space was picked up by a radio telescope. Nothing like it has been captured since, and nobody has ever been able to identify it. It's become such a mystery that most people believe it was some random output from an alien vessel passing by many thousands of light years away. As it turns out, we might now know where the WOW signal came from. Astronomer Alberto Caballero began looking for stars similar to our own in the Sagittarius constellation. His theory is that if the signal really did come from intelligent life, they had probably been a byproduct of a star similar to ours. He identified an interstellar object with almost the exact temperature, diameter, and luminosity of our own home star, the Sun. It's about 1,800 light years away. As it turns out, we might now know where the WOW signal came from. While we haven't actually identified any potential aliens yet, or found the origin of the signal, we at least have a much better idea of where to look for them. Ancient Egyptian Cobra A team of researchers at the Mansoura University Vertebrate Paleontology Center recently discovered the oldest fossil ever of an Egyptian cobra. The fossil dates back 37 million years during the Eocene Epoch. This was a period in history with some seriously impressive diversification of reptiles. Snakes, lizards, legless lizards, and all kinds of scaly creatures were living on the planet, and that includes this incredibly ancient relative of the modern cobra. Even cooler is that it wasn't found in a faraway place, but right in its natural home of Egypt. The fossil was discovered in the Fayum Depression, meaning cobras have been a persistent part of Egypt for pretty much all of time. The Fayum Depression wasn't always a wasteland. It was once a rich and vibrant rainforest full of dinosaurs, mammals, and enormous serpents. The Floating City In 2015, footage appeared online of a mysterious city floating in the clouds over another city in China. The video shocked the world because it really did look as though the city was just kind of hovering in the sky, like some ghost town with buildings rising up past the clouds. But this wasn't a fake video, it wasn't a secret hoax, and it wasn't an actual floating city. According to atmospheric scientist Peggy Lamone, it was just a mirage. A really exciting and convincing mirage, but an illusion nonetheless. It's actually called a superior mirage, or a Fata Morgana, meaning it was an upward projected mirage. Cold air near the ground with a warm layer of air above that must have created a temperature inversion. This is a reversal of what normally happens in the atmosphere. The result was that as light rays passed from one mass of air into the next, they bent in a highly unusual way that tricked our brains. And so, simply because of some hot and cold air, the city appeared to the human eye as if it was hundreds of feet higher than in reality, floating up in the atmosphere. This kind of thing isn't even that uncommon. When people describe seeing ships flying above the ocean, they're really just dealing with a Fata Morgana. All these rays of light fool our brains. We're presented with a hallucination in the real world, 
and suddenly there are floating cities and flying ships. The Gold Star Standard Here's a fun fact for you. Our Sun contains 67 different elements and roughly 2.5 trillion tons of gold. There's actually gold all over space, stuck inside stars and embedded in giant celestial rocks. But even more interesting is that 67 elements are inside our star. And now, for the first time in history, astronomers have finally found another star that contains almost the same number of elements. This one has 65, and it's in the neighborhood of the Milky Way and the Tucana constellation. It's being called the gold standard of stars by astronomers because it's allowing them a unique opportunity to study how some of the heaviest elements in the universe are created inside the raging bodies of stars. Its official name is HD 222925. It's unique in that it contains many elements, but not a lot of mass. It has extremely heavy elements like gold, but scientists don't believe that the gold and other heavy elements were created inside the star. They don't know where they came from or how such elements are formed out in the universe. What they think is that because of all the star's lighter elements, when it goes supernova, those elements will somehow end up producing heavy elements like gold, which will then end up being swallowed during the formation of a new star. Even stranger is that scientists don't believe the star originated in the Milky Way, but from a different part of the universe. That's why it's so unique. However, figuring out how a giant star migrated across space is yet another mystery scientists have yet to solve. Giant Megalodon Tooth A remarkable treasure was found by a six-year-old boy from the small village of Bradwell in the United Kingdom. His name is Sammy Shelton. He was with his dad walking along Bodsey Beach in Suffolk when from out of nowhere he saw something pointy sticking out of the sand. He reached down and grabbed the mysterious object and was pleasantly surprised to see that he had found a tooth. But this wasn't an ordinary tooth. It had once belonged to a gigantic megalodon, the biggest species of shark that ever lived. The oldest remains ever discovered of a megalodon go back about 20 million years, with the most recent being 3.6 million years old. That means that for roughly 17 million years, this enormous shark dominated every ocean on the planet. They were huge, powerful, and ruthless. Picture a great white shark almost as big as a blue whale. According to the Natural History Museum in London, an adult megalodon could grow to at least 60 feet long. These days, there is not much left of the extinct great predators, just their teeth. Since sharks are mostly made out of cartilage, the teeth are the only thing that doesn't disintegrate and fossilize easily. Plus, a shark produces and sheds thousands upon thousands of teeth throughout their lifetime. Considering the megalodon lived all over the world for 17 million years, there are probably billions of fossilized megalodon teeth lost in the oceans. Every now and then, someone like Sammy gets extraordinarily lucky and finds one washed up on the beach. Have you ever found a megalodon tooth or a shark tooth? Let me know in the comments below. World War I Training Tunnels The Salisbury Plain in England is most famous for Stonehenge and a whole collection of other prehistoric sites. But recently, the Salisbury Plain yielded a much more recent archaeological treasure. Researchers discovered a mysterious network of tunnels dating back to the days of World War I. These passages were found underneath a military base lost for over a century. They were found to be filled with grenades, old graffiti, and tins of uneaten war rations. When World War I started in 1914, this part of Salisbury Plain was a training ground for the British Army. It was here where combat engineers were trained on how to properly build tunnels and trenches. These tunnels were to be used during real warfare so that soldiers could dig underneath enemy lines and plant bombs. Archaeologists discovered these practice tunnels while conducting salvage excavations. The army is building a new housing unit, so a bunch of ground had to be dug up. Archaeologist Martin Brown says the project turned into the biggest single investigation of World War I training trenches in the world. It's unclear how they went unnoticed for so long, but it looks to be one of those things where the entrance was covered, dirt shifted, and the whole place was buried. But perhaps the coolest part is the graffiti, which is mostly the names of soldiers scratched into the walls for people to remember them years afterwards. Thailand's Monster Dino In 2016, the largest dinosaur fossil in all of Southeast Asia was found in Thailand. 
This dinosaur fossil was dated 100 million years old and belonged to an enormous herbivore. Even more amazing is that the fossil wasn't even found by scientists or any kind of professional. It was a local in the Chayafum province that was minding their own business when they came across some unusual white lumps sticking out of the ground. These lumps turned out to be bones. A lot of bones! After the locals alerted the authorities and actual scientists were sent to investigate, over 20 individual fragments were found. Pieces of bone from the spine, the pelvis, and the femur. These bones had once made up the body of a titanosauriform sauropod. This can be a little confusing. The family of titanosauriform is a subclade of the Macronaria sauropod dinosaurs. This isn't technically a titanosaur, as that's a totally different dinosaur. Instead, this beast was more closely related to the Brontosaurus, and it was about the size of a blue whale. This new dino found in Thailand is estimated to have grown between 74 and 98 feet long. That makes it one of the biggest animals that have ever lived on this planet. The biggest bones. Researchers in China recently discovered one of the largest deposits of dinosaur bones in the world. It was found in Shandong province on the east coast, near the city of Zhuchang. Since digging started, archaeologists have found over 7,600 samples of dinosaur fossils. These fossils were found on a slope of dirt just outside the city limits that are about 900 feet tall. That's about as tall as a 90-story building, basically the side of an enormous hill with actual dinosaur bones sticking out of it. Most of them date back to the Cretaceous period, the era when the dinosaurs went rapidly extinct. This is one of the most important places for dinosaur discoveries in the world. In 1964, oil prospectors found a small batch of dinosaur bones, and ever since, the discoveries haven't stopped. 20 years ago, the largest remains of a duck-billed hadrosaur were found right here. It was named the Shantungosaurus gigantes, and it weighed a whopping 20 tons, or about 10 times as much as an elephant. With this newest discovery, paleontologists have found the bones of all kinds of truly monstrous beasts. For example, they found the skull of an enormous ceratopsian, one of the biggest flying dinosaurs of all time. They also found the bones of an ankylosaurus, the dinosaur with a club for a tail. Zhao Shijin from the Academy of Sciences says the entire region was probably highly fertile with thick vegetation. This allowed a huge hadrosaur population to thrive and helped keep their bones fossilized when they died. The Komodo Dragon on Steroids The fossil of what paleontologists are calling a prehistoric lizard on steroids was just found in Canada. At a mining site in southern Alberta, researchers uncovered a Komodo dragon-like beast from the ancient world. It's called a Mosasaurus, and it lived inland during the Cretaceous period about 75 million years ago. It wasn't technically a dragon, and it wasn't exactly a reptile like we have today. Instead, it was a kind of combination of all these predators in one. A Komodo dragon that had grown far too large and then somehow had babies with a dolphin. According to Donald Henderson from the Royal Terrell Museum of Paleontology, mining operations in Alberta have provided a consistent supply of fossils over the past few decades. And one of the most popular fossils found by miners is the Mosasaurus. The museum has about 30 partially complete skeletons sitting in its archives. Each one of these deadly creatures was roughly 24 feet long, with a colossal head, sharp teeth, and power enough to kill just about anything else in the ocean. Can you imagine a lizard twice as big as a crocodile? But here's why these creatures are so fascinating. They can't technically be called dinosaurs because they descended from lizards that lived on land. Over a period of tens of millions of years, the lizards slowly adapted to the water. Their legs turned into flippers, they grew extra joints in their skulls, and transformed from a huge land reptile into something like the Loch Ness Monster. Argentinosaurus the Argentinosaurus is the biggest dinosaur in the world. It's the undisputed champion of huge bones discovered in Argentina back in 1987. At the time of its discovery, it was such a big deal that it absolutely rocked the world of paleontology. And ever since its discovery, experts have been trying to pinpoint just exactly how big this dinosaur was, down to the last inch. Some reconstructions have put the Argentinosaurus at between 75 and 85 feet, measured from the tip of the tail to the end of the nose. These same reconstructions place the dinosaur somewhere around 75 tons. 
The wildest estimates have placed the biggest possible Argentinosaurus at being 100 feet long and 100 tons. And if it's the latter, it would make the Argentinosaurus one of the biggest creatures that ever lived. That's bigger than a blue whale. Because of its size, the dino is classified as a titanosaur. These creatures lived on every single continent during the Cretaceous period and came in a variety of shapes and sizes. But they were all pretty similar. Huge four-legged beasts with really long necks. And here is where things get really interesting. The Argentinosaurus may have had an arch nemesis, a carnivore called the Giganotosaurus. Their bones have been found at the same sites all throughout South America and we know they lived at the same time and shared the same territory. Researchers believe the Giganotosaurus, a predator that weighed over 10 tons, hunted the Argentinosaurus in packs like wild hyenas that team up to take down an elephant. It's shout out time! Big thank you to Hamza's Fun Channel and Daniel Z. Martin for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. Crocodile Face a truly gigantic beast has just been identified by scientists in Europe. Paleontologists found the remains of what just might be the biggest European predator in history on the Isle of Wight. The small island is located off the southern coast of England, and it's known to be rich in fossilized remains. Researchers have nicknamed the new species of the predator the White Rock Spinosaurid, although the tabloids are calling it the Crocodile-Faced Dinosaur. According to the researchers in the UK who analyzed the fossils, these are the youngest spinosaurid bones ever discovered in the country. A spinosaurid was a type of carnivorous dinosaur that walked on two legs, but had a skull almost exactly like that of a crocodile. Picture a T-Rex with stubby arms, a fat neck, two extremely powerful legs, and then a head with a crocodile's long mouth. That was the top predator that rampaged across Europe between 145 and 66 million years ago. This newest species is most closely related to the oldest of the Spinosaurids. It may have been amphibious, it was definitely bigger than the T-Rex, and it had a flattened spine that stuck out of its back, probably an organ that helped it to swim. As for its size, we're talking about 33 feet or longer. That makes it the largest predatory dinosaur ever found in Europe. The Giant Pterosaur Paleontologists have finally found the biggest pterosaur species to ever fly over the skies of South America. These creatures, flying dinosaurs that lived 86 million years ago, had a wingspan the size of a school bus. It's like an eagle mixed with a lizard, and each one of its wings is about half a bus. That's the kind of freaky flying lizard we're talking about. It was so big that it's a miracle the creature even kept itself airborne. These specimens were uncovered by scientists in Argentina. Two gigantic skeletons of a new species called Thanatos Dracon Amaru, or more simply, the Dragon of Death. It's part of the Asdarkidae family of pterosaurs who ruled the skies of the entire globe from 146 million to 66 million years ago. These things only went extinct when the asteroid hit, which means they'd probably still be around today if not for that giant ball of space rock that struck the planet. But here's what makes these creatures even more fascinating. It's believed that this exact species of pterosaur predates birds as the very first animal on Earth with wings to hunt other animals from the air. 20 million years before the Cretaceous extinction, these cold-blooded predators were the first animals to swoop down from the sky and kill the Southern Titan. A dinosaur has been discovered in Australia that was roughly two stories tall and the full length of a basketball court. It is now the biggest dinosaur species ever identified in Australia, a creature that can be compared to the Argentinosaurus. Because, just like its counterpart in Argentina, nobody can say for sure how big it was. Somewhere between 80 and 100 feet, and between 16 and 21 feet tall at the hip, it also weighed somewhere between 25 and 81 tons. Like the Argentinosaurus, this is up there in the top biggest dinosaurs ever. It's just the issue of not being able to approximate its size. Still, it was big. To give you a comparison, the Tyrannosaurus rex was only 12 feet tall. It wasn't even as tall as this dinosaur's leg. That's the difference between you and a medium-sized dog. It's called the Australotitan cooperensis, and the first of its bones were excavated in 2006. But it took years of analysis, 
And so it wasn't for over a decade until paleontologists with the Queensland Museum finally revealed what they had discovered. Scott Hocknall from the museum said it was a huge amount of work, taking the bones from the ground, preparing them for study, and comparing them against every other dinosaur species in the world, only then being able to say without a doubt that yes, this was the biggest animal that ever walked through the outback. The Biggest Ichthyosaur We've already seen the biggest predator in Europe, and now it's time to look at another giant predator that skulked the seas. This wasn't a bipedal dinosaur. It didn't have two legs and stubby little arms. The sea dragon was 33 feet long and was like a dolphin. It's called an ichthyosaur, and it lived 180 million years ago across the entire Earth. As of right now, this is the largest example of a predator that roamed the seas ever found in the UK. Its bones, fossilized in rock, were found just a few feet from the shore at the Rutland Water Nature Reserve. At first glance, it looks like a fossilized crocodile, but in fact it was a far less intimidating monster. On the outside, it would have been almost identical to the modern dolphin, except obviously way bigger. It had fins, sailed through the water, and had a long snout that it could use to catch its prey. The beast's skull alone was over six feet long. Tyrannosaur Ancestors a new and enormous carnivorous dinosaur was just identified. The giant predator lived about 90 million years ago, and according to scientists, it bullied tyrannosaurs that were smaller than itself. Because even though tyrannosaurs have a pretty fearsome reputation, they weren't the scariest or fiercest dinosaurs out there. In the Mesozoic era, they were basically babies. Before they would grow into the hulks we recognize them as, they were little baby lizards that walked on two legs and were hunted by even larger carnivores called Carcharodontosaurus. Inside a chunk of rock found in Uzbekistan, one of the Carcharodontosaurus bones was found, and it was a big one. Even though only a single piece of bone was recovered, just one part of the upper jaw, researchers from the University of Calgary and other institutions could put together some basic facts. The creature was probably about 30 feet long and lived when tyrannosaurs were evolving. This is the last known Carcharodontosaurus, and it was probably chased into extinction over the next few million years as the Tyrannosaurus grew bigger and bigger. How this happened, scientists still aren't entirely sure. Scientists have called this specimen the Uluhbegsaurus, and it was still at least one-third bigger than the biggest Tyrannosaur of the day. It's making researchers wonder if it wasn't size, but pack mentality that allowed the Tyrannosaur to become king of the dinosaurs. The Supersaurus Scientists agree that the Argentinosaurus is the biggest dinosaur that ever lived. However, nobody ever said the longest. The title of the longest dinosaur in the world goes to a different animal, the Supersaurus. Scientists say the dinosaur lived 150 million years ago during the Jurassic period and that it could easily have exceeded 128 feet long. That's about twice as long as a bowling lane. New research by Brian Curtis, a paleontologist at the Arizona Museum of Natural History, has even suggested the Supersaurus could have reached a length of 137 feet. That makes it longer than any other competitor by a lot, with the next closest dinosaur, the Diplodocus, coming in at only 108 feet long. It wasn't the tallest at the hips, and it wasn't the heaviest, but from the tip of its tail to the top of its nose, it was most definitely the longest. At least that's the way things are looking. The new study hasn't been peer-reviewed yet, and technically the Diplodocus is still the longest dinosaur. The research was only recently presented based on 50 years of study, looking at a specimen that was uncovered back in 1972. Brian Curtis described the original fossil as a bone salad. The thing had to be put together like the most frustrating jigsaw puzzle in the world, and only five decades later could we get a solid idea of just what kind of beast this was. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite giant dinosaur? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe and come back soon for more awesome dinosaur videos! See you later! Bye!